I'm John Mitchell, Mayor of New Bedford, and this is a city job. Well, we're here today at West Beach, uh, a place that is near and dear to the hearts of so many in our city, including me, um, to talk a little bit about this jewel of a place. Uh, and I mean our, uh, our beaches, I mean not just West Beach, but East Beach, as well as the beach down at the fort. Uh, we're really fortunate to have this asset in our city. Uh, there are so many cities around America who are, that are landlocked, that don't have a real connection to the ocean. And, if, and those that do, many of them don't actually have a real beach. Not only do we have real beaches, but we've got real nice beaches. Uh, and in the last year, we've recognized that um, we need to make the most of them. That's why you've seen uh, some of the really significant investments uh, over really the last two years with the construction of the Harbor Walk and the Cove Walk, uh, as well as the, the beach pathways that we've seen over uh, across, especially over here at West Beach. Things as mundane as trash barrels and landscaping it's all looking nice, and that's because our residents deserve to have something this nice. Uh, the parking is very reasonable. Five dollars gets you a season pass. Try to get that anywhere else in Massachusetts or the Northeast for that matter. So we're really lucky. And another thing that we have going on here is that we have great services. And uh, the beaches, as you'll learn in this program, are very secure. We've got a great team of lifeguards. We have a tradition of very competent lifeguarding at our beaches so that people can stay safe. But there's also a lot going on in the way of programming. And with me today to talk a little bit about the programming is our Director of Parks, Recreation and Beaches, Mary Raposa, who uh, heads up that programming. And Mary, there's a, an awful lot going on at the beaches and I'd love for you just to tell us a little bit about it because I think a lot of people in the city don't know just how much is going on down here. Yeah, it's true. We, we have a lot of great programming at this beach, at West Beach. We have, um, one of the things we've invested in is we've got all the, um, the new ADA accessibility equipment down here. We have reggae on West Beach the last Sunday of every month, June through September. On East Beach, we run a volleyball tournament and the volleyball courts there have gotten improved sand recently, so you see a lot of activity there. And, um, you know, there's always something happening at Fort Tabor. That's just such a popular venue. So there's programming there and just about every single weekend during the, this great weather that we're having. And then, of course, you know, we, we see um, camps and school groups that are down here at the beaches, really enjoying them on a daily basis and uh, along with all the families that come out. So it's, it's a wonderful spot. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great resource. Uh, other communities would die to have something like this. So. Uh, we want to take a little bit of a walk through those, uh, the, the amenity that we have here to get people familiar again with, uh, with what we have. So we've got a great program ahead. Hi, I'm Bobby Tatro. I'm the beach supervisor here at the South End Beach in New Bedford. Today we have the mayor here with us to help us do uh, daily routines as lifeguards. Uh, he's going to help us uh, set up the handicap accessible ramp in the morning. He's going to uh, do a workout with us, uh, which consists of doing a, a circuit, which is a core cool workout and some sprints. And then he'll help us uh, maintain the beach, clean up the beach a little bit, do some uh, trash picking up. So it's going to be a good day. Yep, 
So you just take that sand that's already there for you because we dumped out the bucket yesterday right here. You did, all right. And if we need more sand, then it's easy enough to just go grab it. All right, so we are here with lifeguard extraordinaire Maya Sylvia to talk a little bit about some of the precautions and cautions that are put in place uh, at the beach uh, here at West Beach. And uh, in particular right now, we have the sign on the jetty that comes out that says, as you can see, keep off rocks, no fishing, 8.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Maya, could you explain? So every morning we come in at 8.30 and we go and put out our signs on each of the jetties. Um, the signs are here because we will have people fishing um, in the morning when we do come in and they typically know that they're not allowed to be fishing once we go and put out the signs. Um, throughout the day though, we do have people come and ask if they can go fishing or if they can just climb on the rocks. We don't allow people to go fishing during the day because it's very dangerous with um, the fishing rod and the hook and it can easily get caught in someone's bathing suit, caught on their skin. It's a, just a very unsafe environment. And then the rocks also are just off limits because they get really slippery. When the water is really high, um, as you can see the black rocks too, um, that means that like they are really slippery and it's super easy to slip and fall. We want to prevent a head, neck or back injury. So we always want to make sure that people are off the rocks. So, so the, the problem we're trying to avoid is if someone's out here casting for a scup, they might reel in, you know, a you know, forty-year-old mother of two. Exactly. Who, uh, yeah, that that could be a problem. Or the seven-year-old child. That's or a seven-year-old child. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, and are there other um, are there other signs like this that uh, tell people that there are certain things you can't be doing during the day when people so, are out here on the beach? Over um, before you walk in through the wheelchair ramp, there's um, a pole and it gives you, and on back of a couple of the lifeguard stands, there's a list of rules that are allowed um, to be on the beach. So something that we don't allow is um, flotation devices, whether or not they're Coast Guard approved. Um, we don't allow any type of flotation devices because um, with those flotation devices, people believe that they don't really need to watch their children. Uh. And um, then they go out and they can go a lot further than they want if the parents not paying attention, but we are. Um, that just like creates our, we have to go out and make a rescue, bring them in, but um, that means that someone's not watching the rest of the beach. It makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. So uh, one big topic of conversation uh, at the beach, especially on West Beach, is the seagrass. And there's been, there is today far more seagrass than there used to be on the beach. So I want you to put on, to, to apply the education you got at Sea Lab to explain to everybody why it is that we need seagrass and why, in fact, we're required to have seagrass here. The seagrass is strategically placed in case of a storm surge to maintain the beach um, so it does, so the beach won't wash away from erosion. But uh, we're required, right? The state requires Yes, to... so um, if you are trying to remove the seagrass, the environmental police, they are everywhere. So they will see you trying to pull out the seagrass. Yeah, they're lurking in somewhere in the seagrass they itself. Are. And the, uh, the state e uh, DEP folks, and they will jump out at you if, mm -hmm. uh, if you even pull a blade out. They'll find you. Right, that's not quite accurate, <laughs> but they are, they are vigilant about our maintaining the seagrass. And I get it. Um, I think there are some ways in which, in the long run, we're going to be able to uh, replace some beach. There's a lot of planning going on right now uh, about adding additional uh, beach that might lead to the adding of additional sand to, to increase the, uh, the uh, surface area of the beach. But, you know, this right here, all the seagrass that's in place is uh, there ultimately to prevent uh, coastal erosion, which no, nobody wants to see. And does that, nobody mows the lawn, right? The seagrass, No, no really one's able it. to mow that, that it either. Doesn't, doesn't can't work. pull it, can't mow it. Yeah, all right, just, <laughs> I just, I didn't think so. I, I just figured I'd check. <laughs> So Maya, um, we've rolled out the blue carpet, but this stuff, uh, these things just started appearing on beaches 
in the region in the last couple of years. And uh, I thought these were to keep people from burning their feet on the hot sand, but that's not the reason why, why this is here. What's, uh, what's the reason? So um, this is now, this now makes the beach handicap accessible. So we had the handicap ramp that's right over there. So we've actually had a lot more people come down in their wheelchairs, um, able to go almost all the way down to the beach. And when it is high tide, they can go straight into the water. Yep. Um, so this makes the beach handicap accessible, which is why it's been popping up um, all around the region because people are now becoming more aware, um, trying to make uh, everything much more accessible for all people. Yeah, this is such a simple innovation, but it makes a difference. People on wheelchairs can get right down to the beach and enjoy like everybody else, or almost like everybody else. Yep. And so you guys roll this thing out every single day? Yes, so every single day we roll this out um, because we do have people, um, whatever day it is, not every day, but mostly every day, sometimes more than once a day, they wanna come and um, be able to get a little wet in the water. And um, we actually now have a chair that allows them to get um, fully emerged in the water. And you'll be strapped in as long as there's someone to go swim alongside with you, you're able to um, enjoy the water just like everyone else. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes, uh, makes a lot of sense. And the lifeguards uh, here at the beach will go out with the uh, the person in the wheelchair, right? Or, so, or um, help we'll, them out. we will help them um, get into the wheelchair, strap them up, show them how to use the wheelchair. Um, however, we do have to be watching the water. Right. So um, you need to make sure that you have someone who is able to drag you um, through the water with them. Right. But if anything goes wrong with the wheelchair, we're obviously yeah. the first ones you can there. Get out there. All yep. right, so we're going we're gonna to go ahead and push this out so it's ready for the day. Lifeguarding at West Beach isn't all glory. It isn't all glamour. There are some other aspects of the job that are very important. Hence the picker. Yep. So. Um, Hence the garbage. <laughs> Hence the bucket. So tell me, tell me a little bit about the uh, uh, the duties of lifeguards to keep the beaches clean. So every day. Um, we don't always go right on guard. So only four people will go on guard at 10. So when everybody else um, goes on, when those four people are on guard at 10, everyone else is doing maintenance. So um, the beach is pretty clean as you can see. And that's because every day um, we have people who are picking papers like you just did. Um, we have people who are um, making sure that the big piles of sand aren't all over the handicap ramp or on the pier. Um, as well as picking the weeds that we're allowed to pick, um, not the seagrass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. So that's uh, and then that's what keeps the beach clean. There's no getting around it. You gotta you gotta yep. attend to such things, right? Yes. All right, all right. That's good. The beaches look great. Thank you. We're here with Bobby Tatra, who's the, the beach supervisor in the city of New Bedford, which makes him basically the David Hasselhoff of uh, our city's beaches. Uh, so I want to talk to you a little bit, Bobby, about what goes into being a lifeguard. Walk us through a day at the beach for you guys. Okay. What does it entail? Uh, so pretty much we're here uh, 40 hours a week, seven days a week. We're here at 8.30 to 5.30. Um, pretty much we get here, we have a lot of setting up to do, we have signs to put out, we have tables and chairs to put out, we bring out kayaks, um, we set up the handicap uh, ramp. Um, after that, we get into uh, a workout where uh, they do more. And that's in the morning? That's in the morning, this is all in the morning. Um, we do core workouts for the abs and the cores, we do a, a run uh, every single day. We'll do a, a good swim to keep them uh, up on there, up on that stuff. Um, after that, some days we'll do some right, in-service. Lifeguards have to be in shape. They do. Yeah. They do have to be in shape. Um, we'll do in-services so to keep them up on like the the fundamentals of actually making saves and so so training 
constant yeah, tra training. constant okay. training. Uh, what if there was an emergency happen to happen? Where, what you should do by where you are on the beach? Because yeah. everybody has a role in an emergency. Um, so they need to know, depending on where they are, what station they're at, uh, what to do. So a lot of uh, a lot of the lifeguards here are either current or former swimmers, high school or college yeah. swimmers, right? Yeah. Yes. And is that uh, part of one of the, um, one of the qualities you look for in an yeah, applicant? Yeah. So it, on the application, we ask, and during the interviews that we have, uh, we ask them if they if they have been. If they haven't. Um, if they've swam competitively. Yeah. Like if they that. swam for either a high school or at maybe like the Y because some high schools don't have a team. Like we have a girl here that goes to Volk, they don't have a team, but she's swimming for the Y mm -hmm. and she's a, she's a good swimmer. So, and that's part of, that's a necessity to be a lifeguard is being good at swimming. So you don't want to see your lifeguard go out there doing the doggy. Yeah, battle yeah, to yeah, rescue struggling someone. to swim. Yeah. yeah, that's not a good look for sure. Yeah. So we make sure we have a swim test at the beginning of the year um, to make sure everybody is capable of running on the sand in a capable manner and swimming out in the water. And when we do it, it's pretty cold. some people don't make the cut, right? Oh uh, yeah, there's definitely some people that have tried before. And uh, just, if I don't feel like they could save me, then I'm not gonna put them out there in the public to, yeah. to save somebody else. And are and, there other certifications that are necessary? That uh, are yeah. Prerequisites of the job? So you need to be certified in not just only lifeguarding, but waterfront lifeguarding, because we're not a pool, we're at a waterfront. So you need to be certified in waterfront lifeguarding, uh, CPR and first aid all things that you need to be certified in. Uh, there's been times when people have came where they have certifications in just lifeguarding and not water, waterfront lifeguarding when we can't take them. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a completely different, completely different things that you gotta do to be able to, to know what to do in, cer in certain situations. So take us through uh, sort of a garden variety save or assist or rescue, whatever you wanna call it. So you see somebody out there, maybe 50 yards out, who looks like uh, he's struggling. Um, Take us through what happens. So if Lifeguard we, spots, what, what, what happens next? So if we see a distressed swimmer, uh, our first thing would be to whistle at them and to try to call them in, kind of see how they react to that. If they seem like they uh, can't pay, they don't really notice that and they're still distressed, um, a lifeguard will blow their whistle two to three times. We all have walkie-talkies on each stand. Yeah. They'll alert the other lifeguards because all the other lifeguards have to know what's going on, um, that they're, there's a distressed swimmer and they might have to go out there. From there, they'll go out there, uh, tell the patron that the victim, whatever they are, um, that they're a lifeguard. Make sure they know that they're a lifeguard because if you're a distressed swimmer, you're just going to be trying to save yourself pretty much. So if you go out there, they're just going to push you under. Tell them you're a lifeguard, you're there to help. Do what you need to do to get them above water and safe. Get, do what you need to do to get them out of the water. Um, there's proper ways to go about it, uh, techniques to use that, that we go over number of times throughout the year and that they need to do when they get their certifications um, bring them out of the water make sure they're okay um, that's those are pretty much the main saves that we have down here is distressed swimmers people that maybe go a little bit too far yeah. and they realize they're too far and they can't control themselves it's mainly a mental thing where they just in their start head to panic. they start to panic yeah, yeah and that's that's the problem so so for someone like that do does more than one lifeguard go out to the person what are the other lifeguards um, doing? What are the lifeguards besides the one who made the call doing at um, that moment? Sometimes we'll have somebody uh, go out and help, go out into the water. Most of the time we'll have somebody else go out into the water and make sure that they can actually assist on the save, they can help and assist on the save. And uh, everybody else that isn't involved in that primary or secondary rescuer is doing their job uh, clearing the water because we can't have other people in the water if we're dealing with an so emergency somewhere else. Gotta get out. Everybody else got to get out. If yeah. something was to happen over there now that jetty, people on that beach need to get out. Yeah. We, we clear all the water because if another emergency was to happen, now we got emergencies everywhere and everybody's going to be confused. Yeah. So we, uh, we try to clear the water as soon as possible. Um, we send somebody over there to make sure if they need to see uh, an AD, a backboard, yeah. if the ambulance needs to be called, anything like that, we'll send somebody over there to bring all those uh, equipment to them. So you guys have a direct contact with EMS, with the police department, yeah. the fire yeah. department, yes. everybody, so that you yeah. can get that additional assistance yes. if necessary, uh -huh. including by boat, right? And that's another possibility. Yep. Uh, the Harbor Master, we have him on, yeah. uh, in, our, in our contacts. Um, the Shellfish Warden, all those, all those guys, we have them. Yeah. Now, um, now do, you ever, do you ever have moments when you, know, you see somebody who's uh, you know, walking out in the water and that you don't think they can swim. Do you ever warn them ahead of time? Hey, look, don't go too far. Yeah, out. we'll tell somebody. Um, so like little kids love to try to go out as far as they can. Um, 
people that clearly can't swim will tell them straight up, hey, listen, you can't go more than this distance. Um, you don't look like you can swim. Yeah. Uh, we know it's a public beach and people want to do what they want. But at the end of the day, safety is safety is what we're trying to trying to force here, and we don't want any accidents. So yeah. we try to prevent them before they happen. Yeah. Do you have a sense on like on average how many assists or rescues you guys do in the course of a summer? Just um, on average, over time. On average, I'd say we do about four or five to six assists to saves uh, a summer, uh, where we're running into the water helping somebody get out. And, and so after 5.30, the beaches are unguarded. Right? Yeah. So around 5... you tell people what, when, around closing time? So around 5 to 5.15, depending on the day or how many guards we have, that's when we get off of our stands and we bring it in because we have a lot of stuff to clean up. So we have to bring everything in, clean it up. Um, usually if somebody has kids here, we alert them and tell them, like, uh, it's pretty much swimming at your own risk from here on out. Yeah. There's no more guards. We're off duty. So uh, be aware of that parents usually um, attend to their kids better when, when we leave. Um, and surprisingly, that's one of the busiest times is around when we leave. A lot of people are getting off work. So when we leave, it is a lot of people here. Um, so it is kind of like, it's a little weird leaving when there's a good amount of people here, but yeah. they, all, they all understand and know that once we leave that this is an unguarded beach pretty much and it's swimming at yeah. our own risk. Yeah, that's, uh, you can't repeat that enough to, to yeah. folks because, uh, you know, who knows what, what, what mm -hmm. happens, right? Exactly. Um, now, do you guys, um, Ace, one, one last question. Um, you guys wrap up the year around Labor Day? Labor Day is our last day, yeah. Yeah, and then it, the beaches are unguarded. And from there on out, the beaches are unguarded. They're not closed. Um, it's a public beach, then they, we can't close them, but yeah. they are, again, just like how we, how we leave at, after 5.30. It's an unguarded beach, it's swimming at your own risk, and uh, people, hopefully they understand that and they'll, they'll know that there's no guards here, so they'll be prepared and they'll be safe when they're here. Yeah. Yeah, well, thanks, uh, thanks for making it happen. You guys do important you. work. And, we and try. Like keeping, keeping people safe is uh, the first order of business. And, yeah. And, uh, you guys do a great job. So. Thank you. So I'm here with lifeguard Nate Bates, who's been a lifeguard for how many this summers now? My seventh summer. Seventh yeah. summer. So uh, Nate used to be a swimmer at New Bedford High School. Uh, so he is primed to, to do this kind of work. And uh, you know, Nate, you've been coming back year in, year out. And I know that you know, lifeguarding just isn't an opportunity to work on your tan. Yeah. You, you, you like it. You, you, uh, you enjoy the job for other reasons. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? So I really like the patron interaction. So we have a lot of regulars that are here every day. They've yeah. been here for 30 years. So we kind of come and they, I mean, it's just great to be able to talk to them and kind of hear stories about how great the city used to be and how great these beaches used to be. You mean um, how it used to be? Well, how, like they used to have rafts. They're like, oh, it used to be so oh, fun. Right, right, there used to be rafts. I'm okay. like, we can't do rafts yeah. anymore. But so it's great to get, just be able to talk to them and hear yeah. stories and that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, um, so we have, so one of the interesting things about our beaches is that they're free to the public. Um, the parking rates are very reasonable. You just have to go get a resident sticker and put it on your car and you're good to go and it's cheap. It's five bucks for the whole summer. You can't get a buy like that anywhere else no. in the region, right? Probably yeah. anywhere else in the Northeast, mm -hmm. pretty much. Um, so one of the things that's, um, that I find interesting about lifeguarding is that um, when people look at lifeguards, they see them just watching and they're sort of sitting still and uh, they don't know how much training goes into it and all the qualifications. Mm -hmm. So tell us, tell us, we've heard a little bit about this before, but tell us, tell us from your perspective uh, what, what it takes to be a good lifeguard. I think it's really just maintaining your surveillance and a lot of being a lifeguard is preventing things. So if you're going in the water, you're probably not doing your job right. You know, it's obviously things happen that you don't expect, but yeah. if you see something that looks dangerous, you have to prevent it and yeah. it's a lot of prevention. Yeah. Um, and people just think we sit up there and don't watch, but we're watching constantly. We identify potential problems, so we'll see maybe a little kid going out too far, kind of that kind of stuff. So it's always just kind of it's case by case basis and just yeah. maintaining whatever you need to do to keep people safe. Yeah. No. So for people, so you you've uh, after after uh, graduating from Bedford High School, you went to the University of Miami, you got an engineering degree, then you you were going to be in optometry school next so this is a good job while you're passing through undergraduate to graduate school um, 
for people who are out there who might be interested in lifeguarding, what do they, what do they need to do? What would you say to them to, to convince them that this is worth their while? And what do they need to do? Uh, so they have to go to a certification course. I know the Parks and Recreation at Andrew McCoy hosts one, so they can go do that. Um, it's like an eight-week course or a ten-week course just on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, and then you just have to make sure you're a good enough swimmer to pass the course there. Yeah. You have to swim a 500-yard swim. So for people who don't really swim, it can be challenging. Yeah. But I mean, for swimmers, it's usually it's, pretty it's easy. It's pretty easy. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, you just have to make, make sure you do those two things yeah. and you're pretty much all set. Yeah. But you've been doing it for seven years, so obviously it's something you enjoy. Yeah, I love it here. Yeah. I wouldn't. I'd come home from Miami just to do this. Come home, <laughs> yeah, yeah, from <laughs> Miami to be at this beach. Yeah. Not at, not in South Beach, mm -hmm. but in this beach. Yeah, South perfect. Beach in Miami, this beach, mm -hmm. West Beach in New Bedford. Yep. Yeah, that's saying a lot. So yeah. that, no, that's great. You know, and it's, uh, it's uh, there's a tradition here at West Beach and at East Beach that goes back decades mm -hmm. uh, of lifeguards and the culture around it and the safety and the services that uh, the city provides the public. I mean, there aren't too many places, too many cities uh, anywhere in the Northeast at least that have um, this available to the public. And we're very, very proud to, uh, to be able to, to do that. Yeah. So thanks for, uh, thanks for making it Thank happen, you. Nate. All right. Uh, well, we learned a lot today. We had a lot of fun. Uh, and as we wrap up, Mary, uh, tell us a little bit about what people need to know about the beaches, about you know, where to get a pass, when are they open, um, just the, the, the basics so that as we close, people who are interested in getting down here more, or getting back here for the first time in a long time, they, they know what to do. So the beaches are guarded, all three beaches are guarded um, seven days a week, starting the last weekend in June right through Labor Day. And um, we do require a seasonal parking pass. There are day passes available, but the seasonal parking pass is $5, as you mentioned, for the whole year. So those passes are available at our office at 181 Hillman Street, City Hall at the City Clerk's Office, and also at the Traffic Office on Elm Street. And um, so we encourage people to get those early, and then the parking is so easy. As you look around the state, including in down the Cape and throughout southeastern Massachusetts, the fees for beaches are going sky high. So what we have uh, here in New Bedford for our residents is really something special and, and at a very affordable price. So, uh, but we, what, to, to make the most of the beaches and to deliver the services that our residents deserve, we need to hear from you. So, you know, you can call Mary, you can email her. Uh, we're doing surveys of beachgoers to, to get that information. Uh, and we're going to continue to improve the place because, uh, again, uh, this is, this is a, a great asset for the city of New Bedford. Uh, and we want to make the very most of it so our residents can enjoy it and so kids like the ones you hear in the background uh, can have great memories of, of their time here. So with all that, that's been another episode of City Jobs. Stay tuned for our next episode. How's things? How are you? Hey, good to see you. Good to see you. How's the water? It's cold. Is it cold still? Yeah. yeah. When you only go half in you're going to get in all the way to kind of even. Once you're in there, it's good though, right? Once you're in there, it's good. You cool off. The rocks. We're getting good customer feedback. We need softer sand. Softer sand, guys. What do you think? Softer sand. We got all wet. All right. All right. Give me fives. Pass the rocks. Pass the rocks. How are you, dear? How are you? What's going on? Oh. Oh, oh, my hand, it's broken. Oh, you guys are going to be on Channel 18. On TV, you're going to be on TV. You're going to be, you're going to be famous. Of course, of course you can go back in the water. It's free. All right. I'm 15 years old and I am a heart recipient. I got my first heart transplant when I was one and a half years old. I got my second heart when I was 13. When I get my driver's license, of course I'm gonna say yes to be an organ donor. I've been saved twice, so who says I can't save somebody else? This gift of life was made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov.